Hey, thank you. We haven't even started yet. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's Cherokee Starfish. Welcome back this weekend to the newest episode of Icewind Dale. I hope you are ready for it. We are here in Cresselac's tomb in the Vale of Shadows. We've cleaned out the rest of the veil, so whatever it is that's plaguing Kaldahar must be here. So, let's dive right in, shall we? Man, hmm. Haviland agrees. Well, before we go through these giant doors up here, we're going to go ahead and explore some of these other open passages, because we know we don't like to leave open doors behind us. Motmik is going to take point, and that is why. See if he can find any other traps. On the one hand, I hope not, because it means we have to stop and disarm them and can be vulnerable to them, but on the other hand, I mean, free experience points. Oh. Get them, guys. Whew. Already. Okay. Well, we cleaned out our inventories last time, so... Agreed. Hello, welcome. We are just getting started. We're gonna let them come to us, because I am still not confident that there aren't more traps. Guard. Let's take a look. We're gonna go slow here. Give him a chance to make those dice rolls, you know. Oh, that is a zombie. Aha! See? A tiny trap. Ready. That's alright. Motmik's eyes are sharp. So are those swords. Those high-quality weapons we got them really make a difference. Okay. Somebody's inventory is full. There we go. I'm on it. I... Right then. He can circle around and disarm this. All right. It's not even locked. Nice. Some gold, a necklace. Ah, entangle. Not a spell I think we'll be able to use. That's druid only. Yeah. Hmm. Can be used by multi-class cleric ranger or fighter druid? Hmm. Oh, that's right, his inventory's full. Let's see if Haviland can carry it and use it. I'm not sure if he can, but he is a ranger. Now, nope. weird. You have to be multi-class in order to use it. Oh, the sarcophagus is open and empty. A fine layer of dust lines the bottom. Okay, but honestly, like, that's a little bit better than the alternative, because uh, if there wasn't dust, I would think that it had been opened recently. So even if there are undead that came out of that sarcophagus, like, they've been out of it for a while. Guard. Oh. Hello, monsters. We are not here to play. Not with these zombies, anyway. Oh, well, more zombies. Did Sam just make fun of himself? For being a halfling? Oh, big guy. I like how these are called tattered skeletons. And of course it's like, tattered, you know, implies that they're a little ragtag around the edges. But they're bigger than the other skeletons? You'd think it would be the other way around, wouldn't you? Oh, more of them. Well. Ooh. Oh, oh, we love that sound. 
Hathalyn just leveled up. Nice. Well, that's a good way to start a stream, isn't it? Okay. Let's move silently and hide in shadows. Got a little bit better, I think. Yeah. Thaco. Additional hit points. All those saving throws. Nice, nice, nice. Let's see. Let's have Motmik go on ahead and take point again. Aha! And I see this one's a little bit different. Sarcophagus is open and empty. The lid has been carelessly thrown aside and lies shattered on the floor nearby. It doesn't say that there's any dust in it. So whoever was in there came out and they were mad about it. There we go. Sometimes as we disarm these traps, I kind of wonder what they are. Okay. Now that, I like the looks of. Priest's Key. Ornate golden key with a black onyx gemstone in the handle. Closer inspection reveals a small skull has been carved into the gem. Hmm. Well, we will just have to see. Everybody's got a healing potion at this point. We'll throw these to Astrid, then. She's got our other keys. She can carry that one, too. Just because Astrid's probably the hardest person in the party to kill. Let's see. Potion of Infravision. Someone already has that, don't they? Yes. Sana has one. So we'll just give that to her. In case, in case she needs to go sneaking around. We're going to give these to her, too, because those look like some bracers, gauntlets... Not identified. Ooh, her lore skill is not sufficient to identify these. Interesting. Well, then, that means that Keshara will have to do it, but she doesn't have it memorized at the moment. So, we will deal with that shortly. Agreed. Once again, Hathaland is on my side here. I'm glad that we're on the same page, my guy. Let's check for some more traps down this other hallway. This place actually uh, doesn't suffer too badly from WTF dungeon architecture, as we have uh, kind of discussed it in the past. You can see the layout is fairly regular, you know, like... A room off of every corner, room off to the side, but it's it's relatively symmetrical. I'm not upset about that. Done. I'm also not upset about how well they're doing against these undead. Oh, Warriors. goodness. We can't have a moment to search for traps. More of them. Okay, well, come on, it's a party. Sometimes I hit that space button a little too fast. One more? Ooh, that's a ghoul. Yep, get him. You don't want to get poisoned or catch a disease or be paralyzed. Ghasts are worse for that, but ghouls are still bad. Aha! Same as the other one. Well, let's disarm that then as well. Ooh, nice! Some turquoise. This makes me suspicious. I feel like that one ought to be trapped too, but I'm not going to complain if it isn't. Okay, no, it actually appears to be all right. Okay, more healing potions. Let's give these to Sam. We'll just go down the line. Gems go in the bag, of course. Who's carrying the mummy's tea? He is. We'll have Sana tell us what it is. Part of me feels like after you have found so many of an item um, that uh, you should just automatically know what it is. You shouldn't have to identify it anymore. But of course, realistically, there's no way to know what's in that bottle like we know because it has the same icon every time. So we can guess. 
but that's just a placeholder. All of these probably come in different looking vials and flasks and what have you, and so in the actual reality of Dungeons and Dragons, you would have to taste that potion or use magic to identify it or what have you every time. Longsword plus one. All right. Well, look at that. Our first magic sword, a plus one longsword, y'all. That means we are officially adventurers for real now. Check that out. Now, if it was just a plus one flaming longsword, that would be the whole uh, the whole shtick. So, Astrid and Hathaland are both using longswords at this point, and they both have a high-quality longsword. So... I think as with the high quality long swords, I am going to um, I'm going to favor Hathalin first, not just because he's kind of party leader, but also because since he is dual wielding, um, that reduces his attack rate. He's got those big penalties even though he has proficiencies, and so this will, you know, there we go. That helps a little bit more, plus one to hit and damage. So, okay, well, that's a save. I'm going to make sure that we keep hold of that and don't have to find it again. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll find another plus one longsword for Astrid. I know eventually we will, but... We'll find us a plus one battle axe, too. I will watch you go. Straight on ahead. Hmm, no enemies yet. I'm suspicious. There they are. I'm listening. Well, listen to this. Get them! Thank you, Sam. I'm on it. We are moving right along. Let's get this guy, too. There are a bunch of ghouls. I don't like that. Ah, uh, this one's been placed carefully against the nearby wall. Unlike that other dude, this guy got up on the right side of the sarcophagus. Let's see. Potion of strength. A ring. Armor spell. Ooh, a magic short bow. Nice. Wish it was a long bow, though. For sauna. On the other hand, compensation, she can have this armor spell, because we know Keshara already knows that. She started with it. Someone has... Okay, he's got the Potion of Strength. We'll just pass that right along. Excellent. I don't know that she needs it, because of course she's already wearing armor, but that way, in case something happens. A plus one short bow. Yeah, well, that's all right. Free cash is free cash. Okay. Hmm. Fine layer of dust on the bottom. Well, this one doesn't seem trapped. As always, I, I... What is the present tense of, like, in, of suspicious instead of suspect? You'd think that the present active tense would be, like, suspise. I suspise that this is trapped. Oh, yeah. So here's an important item. A holy symbol of Merkel. He has to pick a white human skull face on against a black field. It appears to be carved ivory set into a black onyx. We will need that. Hmm. Well, Motmik can just hang on to that for right now. We'll give this to Keshara. I almost am tempted to give it to Sam to take care of, but on the other hand, I kind of don't want him carrying the holy symbol of another god, right? Ooh, here we go. Larlock's Minor Drain, Burning Hands, more stuff for Keshara. I think for most spells, she's going to get dibs, and then Sana can have, like, whenever we find a duplicate. 
Let's see, InfraVision. Yeah, once again, now that she has a variety, like I want to maybe memorize some different spells, but I'm not going to have her get rid of a spell that she's currently got memorized and empty that slot out just to put something else in it that then will not be like currently up to date until we rest. All right, here we go. The big doors. Hmm. Hmm. Greetings. I am Bone Dancer Mitos. I must commend you on your efforts to enter here. Your perseverance is remarkable, to say the least. Now tell me, why are you here? Hmm. Well, we are seeking the evil that plagues Kaldahar. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Kaldahar. Do you refer to the little hamlet under the great tree? No. My concerns lie within these walls, not without. I would suggest you continue your search elsewhere. Hmm. Should we ask him why why he's claiming innocence, or should we just see if maybe he knows who it is? We know we're going to have to go through this guy either way. Uh, let's see if maybe he can tell us, like, if he's got a theory of his own. I have no idea. What happens outside this veil is of no concern to me. Okay, so now we have to ask him why we should believe him anyway. Amazing. You come here and slay my guardians steal the keys to this tomb. You break the seals upon these doors, and you question my innocence upon what authority? Hmm. Okay, well... It doesn't really matter, uh, but Kaldahar did send us, and Arendelle has some authority, right? Ah, I see. And who in Koldahar holds the deeds to this veil or this tomb? By what right do they send you here with authority to kill, loot, and destroy? It's a really good point that too often does not come up in games like this one, where you can just go into people's houses and root through their drawers, and just kill every monster you come across, and no one ever really questions it. And I'm glad that they bring it up in this story, because, uh, like, Merkel's a bad guy. Let's be clear about that. He is, a, he is a bad and naughty crime boy, but at the same time, if these guys aren't hurting anybody, and they're not the source of the evil, then, you know... If they were just kind of hanging out in this tomb and not bothering Kaldahar, then we're sort of breaking and entering. We're, we're kind of the villains here, maybe. So let's see. Well, it is the right of any people to take action against a perceived threat. That's very broad, like that's reasonable, but there's a lot of gray in that. It matters not who sent me here. I need to investigate this tomb. Will you allow it? Let's, uh... Let's go with that one. I don't want to argue philosophy with this guy because he's a cleric. And Hathaland is the one doing the talking, as you can see from the color over there. Let's just see if, if he'll let us explore. No. It is forbidden. As a matter of fact, I have spent too much time talking with you and neglecting my duty. I must demand that you surrender the keys in your possession and leave here. I will not ask again. Well, and here we go. This is where we're really stuck in. We can just tell him, like, no. Or we can say, listen, we're, we're trying to be reasonable. See, I cannot in good conscience leave here until I've investigated the tomb fully. Can we come to some understanding? Mm, yeah, 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 let's try that one. No, we cannot. You have your duty, and I have mine. This conflict was inevitable. Guardians, to arms. Well, 
but we we tried to reason with him. Okay. Well, I'm very sorry about this, but we're going to have to take you out first. I await your instructions. Let's see what spells she's got available. Got chill touch. Let's uh let's hit him with a chromatic orb. Kishara has been beating on people with her stick too much. She's a wizard. Let's have her act like one. Oh my. Hmm. That is more undead than perhaps I uh, I expected. Well. Hmm. We could have Sam try and turn undead, but really I think we need to take my toast down as quickly as we can. Oh, he's casting a spell. Stop him. Oh, it won't let me target them with... Oh. I guess it works a little bit differently. Oh, well. There we go. We tried. Well, thanks for the magic warhammer, buddy. Huh. Keshara leveled up from that. Let's split these attacks up just a little bit. Ooh. Oh, they're getting hit pretty bad. Let's have our archers do this, and Keshara can come up behind and... Ha! Wow, nice! Hit! Look at that. Go, wizard, go. Okay. Well, my goodness gracious. That looks like another plus one longsword to me, maybe. There we go. Okay. Well, unfortunate, but it is what it is. Oh, first things first. Keshara leveled up from that. Excellent. Oh, she's got access to level 3 spells now, y'all. That's super important. Especially because she's only got 4 more hit points. 20 hit points total. Look at that. Bless her heart. Ooh, another first level slot. What should we put in here? Let's, uh... Hmm. A Burning Hands would have been really useful in that fight. But we have those gauntlets. Let's, um, we're gonna have to do this at some point anyway. Let's go ahead and memorize and identify. No new second level slots. She doesn't know any third level spells yet. Okay. Motmik leveled up as well. Looks like his thief ticked over. So. Okay, well. He still sucks at sneaking, but we also haven't been doing a lot of sneaking here with him recently. Let's focus on this, as we have been doing. There we go. And let's do... There we go, a little more Detect Illusion. Okay. Well, he didn't get a lot of hit points for that. Because one of the quirks, of course, is that uh, even with max hit points turned on, because they're multiclassed, they get like half of whatever they normally would. So he only got three because thieves get a, like a d6 health. Okay, we got some hallways branching off here. Oh, hey, Sauna leveled up too. Awesome. But her pickpockets is really good. I have to go stealing some stuff. Lore leveled up. Oh, maybe she can identify those gauntlets now. She got another level 2 spell slot. Excellent. Now we can memorize a strength spell. See if she ever uses it. Okay, another plus 1 longsword. Awesome. That goes to Astrid, of course. Bam. And that's really important because, of course, like the high quality longswords, the masterwork, they're just plus 1 to hit. These are plus 1 to hit and damage as well. And they're a little bit faster. See, this is speed factor 5, and that's 4. But also, importantly, some creatures have resistance to normal weapons, and they can only be hurt normally with magical 
armaments. So that's another way that that's really useful. Let's see. Here we go. Give that gem to Motnik. Let's take a look here. Warhammer plus one. Nice. Plus one to hit. Another plus one to damage. Speed factor three. That's a pretty good weapon, but not as good as his plus one morning star. Okay, come on. Come on, baby. Yes, all right. She's able to identify it. Nice, nice, nice. So, yeah. Gauntlets of weapons skill. Let you use weapons better, just as it says. Even an unfamiliar weapon may be used with some skill. So it gives you plus one to hit. Huh, well. Hmm. Who has the highest Thaco? Hers is 18. 17. 19. It's probably going to be her because she's a wizard. 18. 16. 16. They seem to be hitting fairly consistently. We could put it on her, but also, once again, she really shouldn't be in melee combat as much as she already has been. Um, hmm. I feel like it should go to one of the warriors, probably, to help them even more. Like, maybe Hathalyn, because he's dual-wielding? To be fair, he did get this Ring of Lesser Resistance. Uh, so, he, he's kind of sucking up the magic items so far out of the few that we have that are not weapons. Who do you all think we should give it to? We can give it to Keshara as the person who is the worst at combat. Um, our archers seem to be fairly accurate. I, I don't feel like they need it. We could give it to Hathaland or Astrid. That'll help with his dual wielding even more. Um, we could give it to Sam because he's in melee a lot. And of course, he's he's competent at it. Especially since he has a magic weapon, but he also is a cleric, not a fighter. So you saw that his base Thaco is, uh, you know, not as good as Astrid and Hathalyn's. What do y'all think? Put this over here, like a quest item should be. I really don't know. I'm kind of torn. Because, I mean, plus one to hit is good for anybody. It doesn't matter. So, yeah, that's, I feel like that's kind of where I'm leaning, just because dual wielding gives you so many penalties, that, like, part of me wants to give it to her so bad, but I don't want to encourage her or us to, like, put her into melee any more than she already is. There we go. All right. Well, that's that, then. Excellent. We are moving right along. Well, we've got three ways to go. This uh, column-lined path heading up some stairs is probably going to... I'm, I'm guessing that's going to go to the edge of the map. Ho, ho. This is why we search. Ho, ho. Ho. Oh, goodness. Oh, gracious. Tanks, get in front. Oh, Merkel Sending. That's like a super-powered shadow. Here, y'all can't reach it. You hit something else. There you go, Astrid. What's it doing? Let's see. Sauna's weapon is ineffective. Yeah, see, it's they're having trouble hitting it uh, without magic. But they got it. All right. Whew. Whew, 1,200 points. That's rough. Oh, man, and Kishara got hit. See? Oh, Lord, because she got somehow pushed to the front. <laughs> get, get back there. Oh, my goodness. You might need to change the marching order. Let's do that. There we go. That way she'll be in the back. Okay. High quality mace. I don't know why they're green other than to just distinguish them. Let's check out that ring. Ooh. 
She can't identify it. I was about to th say that because Sana was able to identify those gauntlets of weapon skill, maybe we could go back in for Keshara, and we would be able to um, unmemorize that identify spell temporarily in favor of something else. But once again, here we have a ring that nobody can memorize or can uh, identify. So there we go. See, that puts her comfortably at the back there. Oh my gosh, y'all. Motmik's getting grumpy. Let me disarm me trap. Excellent. This is a statue of a skeleton clad in a billowing black cowled robe and wielding a scythe. The face inside the cowl looks wrinkled and scaly. The eyes are sunken and glow slightly with a cold, evil light. So yeah, we're not making any bones about Merkel being an evil god. Okay, well, we'll send Motmik on along. Let's see what else he can dig up. He's got to find the way for us here. Just kind of picking along slowly. I'll send the rest of the team up here to back him up. If he's not finding any uh, traps, then get up here, you guys. Astrid, you're so much smarter than that. Oh, come on, look at this hallway. Those are like secret doors into monster closets. Like, there, there's got to be... A trap trigger here someplace. Done. I feel like this is going to be terrible. Well, two can play at that game. Sana, get up there and help him. I want to just let him get shot at. Those archers are there to lure us to the end, you see, so that we will rush down the hallway to attack them and trigger something. But we're not foolish. We won't fall for their trap. Come on, find it. Is it right here? Hmm. Hmm, I suspise. I'm on it. All right, well then. Have Sana grab these arrows. You just tell me what you need. Those, yep, plus one arrow is excellent. Those can stack with what she's got there. I had almost forgotten she had those, so when we run into something like that Merkel's sending where her normal arrows are ineffective, these will help. Bullet plus one, that'll go up here for her. Nothing else yet. That's what it was. Oh, no. Ah. Well. Let's do this. There we go. We'll switch since he's in melee. He never gets to do anything with that. Same for you. Here we go. Can't shoot someone that close. Sana, 
See, every one of those opened. I knew that they would. And not just because, uh... <laughs> not just because I've played the game before. Okay, I think Motmet can switch back to his crossbow now. Oh, no, he's still, like, right there in front. Get him! Get him! Alright, now we'll switch back. Enemy sighted. Whom else? Whomst? There we go. Okay. Well, who has inventory slots? Sam and Astrid have plenty of room. We'll let them alternate picking things up. Any other junk down here? One or two things. Have him pick up a couple as well. Alright, well there we go. Back over to this side. I think that means that we can safely say this one is probably the one that heads further into the tomb. Alright, Motty. Let's see if there's any traps down this corridor. Nothing yet. But if this corridor doesn't look trapped... Aha! See, I knew it. He's shooting flaming arrows? Quick, get him so that we can pick those up off of him. Shoot him again. Oh, he's wasting the flaming arrows that we could have. There. Gross. I'm on it. Those could be our flaming arrows, Motmik. Oops. Being super picky about the facing. There we go. There we go. That went a little quicker. She can pick those up. Done. Ready. Watch me go. You have my undivided attention. Ill -fitted. There we are. I can grab these. She can grab those. Look at all this treasure. Is there another trap, maybe? I can't remember. Aha! See, I knew there was something there. A secret door. Oh. With an enemy. That is a mummy, I think. Yep. Take that down. There we go. Okay. I was worried about the mummy because, I mean, mummy's tea is a thing because mummies give you mummy rot. And that's never good. They can inflict a magical wasting disease on you. It's just terrible. Now you know one of these is trapped. Come on, Motty. Mott Mc my man. while he thinks about it. Let's identify these. High quality arrows. Arrow of fire plus one. More plus one bullets. Excellent. Right, well, some gold and gems. Pop those right over here and he's got some high quality bolts as well. And then let's see. Scrolls. I believe one of those is blindness. Yep. And this one is aid. So he can pop that right there. Meanwhile, she can learn this. 
What's in here? Ooh, hey. Bunch of stuff. Okay, well, mausoleum key, potion of genius. Let's go ahead and distribute those. Our key collector here. A lot of inventory management in this game. Okay, some scrolls. This is Knock. Awesome. And Resist Fear. I think that one's appropriate for Sauna, don't you? She's a bard. Another good second level option. Knock is also thematically appropriate for her, but... Keshara has more spell slots. Knock is the spell that opens locked doors and chests, which is great. Let's see, a giant halberd. Ooh. Uses halberd proficiency, so it doesn't count as a spear. Mage robe of cold resistance. Well, we know who gets that, because only wizards can wear it. Doesn't give you any armor or anything, but plus 20% cold resistance. That's pretty good. Much better than that uh, Yeti leather armor, right? Or Yeti hide armor. And it tells you here, many young mages receive something like this as a gift from their instructors upon successfully completing their first five years of study. There we go. Let me see her sprite alter just a little bit. Orders agreed. Ooh. Of course. He's upset about it. I don't blame him. Get him. Get him. I don't like being shot either. I just want to detect traps. Leave me alone. Wow. Ah, uh, see, even as slow as I'm going, I got a little antsy. I went too fast. I await your instructions. I'm ready. Almost to the point we're going to have to start leaving stuff behind if we're not careful. There we go, some more plus one bullets, I'm sure. She's got as many of those now as she does the other. That's a full stack. Done. More skeletons to shoot at while they shoot at us. They're shooting at something else. Okay. You just tell me what you need. I need for you to kill that skeleton. Thank you. Haha, -ha, you won't get us twice. Ooh. That guy might get us. Nah, we're fine. Oh, another one. Astrid's tanking this one. Okay. Gone. Shoo wee. Okay, well. Folks, I think this might just about do it for our poor inventory. Do you have any more room? Okay, Keshara's got us. <laughs> Hammer darts. Nice. Yeah, so you fling these. There's a 15% chance the target is stunned. That's not bad at all. Of course, she's not proficient in that either. Ooh, yeah, we're either going to have to start leaving some stuff behind 
and making decisions about what treasure we're going to drag along, or we're going to have to make another trip back to town and then return to the inn. So, honestly, I think let's do that. Let's do make a quick trip back, because um, we still have that ring that we need to identify, and in order to do that, Keshara will need to rest anyway. And we could rest here, but there is a chance of... Um, you know, random encounters and that kind of thing. Second level, yep. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot more to this tomb. This is just a good excuse to, we'll go ahead and, like a little caterpillar. Hmm. We'll just go ahead and head back to Koldahar. We'll rest. We will identify that ring. And then we'll come back here with empty backpacks. And we'll go again. I think this is also a good opportunity maybe to go visit Auric as well because, uh, you know, something else that we need to do is Keshara has third level spell slots now, but she doesn't know any third level spells, folks. Third level is the magic level. No pun intended, but that's like, that's when things get really interesting because third level is when you unlock stuff like Fireball and Lightning Bolt, the big ones, the Sorcerer's Darlings, as Might and Magic 6 called them. There's some really good stuff at third level, and that's when wizards and so forth uh, start to get serious. So we should probably consider that, and as much as I want to save our money as, as much as we can, um, probably we should think about Maybe buying a spell or two. But that's okay, because there's a couple of other things I want to try while we're in town as well. And depending on how they work out, we may find that uh, we don't have to spend quite as much money as I'm worried about. Okay, that armor spell wearing off. First things first. Let's go up here, because we know that only the blacksmith is going to buy these weapons. Let them head up here. I wish we could find that guy's kid. Wish we could find everybody that went missing, honestly. Alright, Conlon. Time to sell all of this dead weight. Oh my goodness gracious. Love the music for Koldahar. Now, this is great, too, because we can sell these Masterwork Swords for a pretty penny now that we don't need them anymore. If only we could find a Magic Axe. Now, you will see... Part of that's the difference in their Charisma scores, I suppose, but then part of it is also... Um, the more that we sell stuff and the more of something he has in his inventory, the less he'll buy new versions of it for. Which makes sense. Inflation and, you know, glutting the market and all that. Morning Star. Uh, that short bow plus one. Nice. Warhammer. Things we're not going to use anyway. Worth quite a pretty penny. Very nice. That giant halberd as well. It's not magical. It's just very big. So big you take an AC penalty when you wield it. Oh, don't want to sell the hammer darts necessarily. Well, hmm. Hmm. They're only worth one GP each. But I'm kind of tempted to sell them anyway because uh, when she gets a ranged weapon, we're going to make her proficient with the sling, not with darts. So there's no reason to hang on to those, I suppose. We can always buy more someplace if we need them. Oh, there we go. Sell them all at once. Okay. Well, getting there. Maybe we can afford a magic item sometime soon. Someday. <laughs> we could buy a katana. We could buy these bracers. See, there's a few of these lower level items we could get now, but of course some of these... It's just never going to happen. Hmm. But we'll see. 
Maybe there's something that we can do. Okay, first of all... I'm on it. Let's head back over here and rest. She's got that Identify spell ready, so we'll find out what's up with that ring. I believe that the magic item drops in this game are fairly consistent. There's probably one or two that are randomized. Um, I don't know them by heart, of course, at all. Other than, like, there are one or two that I know to look for in specific places. But generally speaking, um, I think that uh, the same magic items kind of, like, drop in the same places or from the same enemies over and over. All right, let's see what this ring's all about. See, now this button is lit up because now that we have rested, she has that identify spell ready. And it gives you the option because you can find scrolls of identify, which, yeah, I mean, that's how we uh, learned the spell in the first place, right? So now if we find future scrolls, those are great because each one of those is a free identify that we don't have to waste a spell slot on, we don't have to rest. Ring of Shadows, Priests of Mask, who is the god of thieves, made this plain silver ring in order to help their more generous worshippers. In return, the thieves who borrowed the ring gave a portion of their earnings to Churches of Mask. Hmm, quid pro quo, you know. That's a thing with thieves. The ring left the church's ownership when an ungrateful thief named Jenik decided to run away with the prized item. The Church of Mask hired assassins to hunt down the man and kill him, but he was never captured. It is believed that Jenik retired in Waterdeep and lived out the rest of his days in peace. Well, plus 15% to hide in shadows, and you are not detectable by magical means like detect invisibility and scrying. Very nice. Hmm. Not usable by bards. Not usable anybody, really. <laughs> so, it looks like um, Haviland has... Yeah, see, I like, this is a good quality of life update for the enhanced version. You pick an item up, and the people who are lit up are people who can use it. And uh, if it lights up, like, um, with a yellow highlight the way that it does when we pick up arrows, for example, see, it shows that somebody who already has some in their inventory has a weapon equipped that can use that type of ammunition. So yeah, Hathalyn's Hide in Shadows is pretty decent already, I believe, from being a ranger. Where is that? Where are your skills? Show me your skills. Uh, I saw it when he leveled up. Oh, there we go. Goodness gracious. So his Hide in Shadows is 45, Move Silently is 50 with no bonuses of any kind. But also, he's not really doing a lot of sneaking. He's the one who has problems because... Yeah, see, his move silently is 40 and his hide in shadows is 40. So I think we know who this is going to go to, especially since he's already wearing a magic ring. Bam, there we go. They'll make his hide in shadows 55, and they can't find him with magic when he's sneaking. Very, very nice. And now, do you think we should keep this Identify memorized? We don't know when we'll need it again. On the other hand, she could have something like Color Spray or Burning Hands. I'm thinking of maybe trading it out for a Burning Hands. That's, that's a spell that would already have been useful a couple of times. Because this is one of those where if you do have it memorized, that's great, and it's really handy in the middle of a dungeon. You know, if you run across an item that your lore skill is too low to identify automatically. But on the other hand, that's one fewer attack spell that she has. And you know what? Might get rid of Chill Touch, too. See, an undead creature suffers no save or to hit penalty, but will be affected by the panic for two turns unless it saves. But it wouldn't let me target those other undead. Hmm. Don't know what was up with that. Well, we'll leave that one and try it again. I'm thinking maybe... Let's trade this out for a Burning Hands and see how that works. Alright, one last stop. Let's head back over here to Oryx Tower. We've got to sell that Entangled Scroll, don't we? And only he is going to buy it from us. 
and then I think it might be time to uh, try something else as well. I teased about pickpocketing him before, but Sana's pickpocketing skill has gotten a lot better, you know? Maybe we can try again? We'll see. The worst that happens is he gets mad and we load it, right? I'm on it. All right. Well, first things first. Okay, let's sell that scroll. 80, not bad. Now that our business is done, so we don't have to do that again. Okay, and let's... Hmm. Pickpockets failed. Darn it. It's probably just going to keep failing, honestly. Oh, she succeeded. What did she get? <gasps> See? We don't have to pay for all of those magic items. Amulet of Meta Spell Influence, the Amplifier. Known for its ability to enhance spell casting, this amulet is highly sought after by magic practitioners. It was created by Elairdrin Melwith, who resided in the Star Mountains. Uh, his reasons for fabricating such an item stemmed from his womanizing habits, and to this extent, the amplifier served his purpose well. It was later taken from him by a mage with a more destructive intent, but records detailing the change of hands vary widely. You can cast one extra second-level wizard spell. Well. Bam. See? Nice, nice, nice. We have an invisibility and a blur. Blindness is not going to work very well on those undead. Neither will stinking cloud or horror. Protection from petrification. We don't need nothing's turning us to stone, so I guess that leaves knock, unless we want to double up. Knock is good to have, because it's kind of like identify, and that when it comes up, it's really necessary. So if we find something that he has trouble unlocking, she can do it. Okay, well, in that case... Sana has no problems. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, she's got no problem at all with this. Take a look at this, folks. See, we don't have to pay for magic items, and Oryx kind of a douchebag anyway. Ring of free action. Ooh. Edventar's gift. This ring was given to the reef scavenger and hunter known only as Edventar by a group of aquatic elves long his friends. His help in routing the pirate queen, Yanandra of Dambrath, was instrumental in their survival, though Yanandra continues to be feared anywhere the water meets the land. So, yes, the wearer is immune to everything, magical and otherwise, that impedes mobility in any way, although he can still be hasted and receive beneficial movement effects such as those granted by Boots of Speed. That is a really powerful magic item, folks. That is some good stuff. And we need to decide who to give that to, honestly. Mm. Normally you would think you're rogue, like right away, because they could be bound or something or caught up in an entangle spell, but my first instinct is actually to give it either to the cleric or to one of our fighters, because our wizard should hopefully be well out of the way when someone casts a spell like, say, Web right, or Grease. She shouldn't be walking through that stuff. Um, but if we give it to Sam, Astrid, or Hathaland, then what that means is we have someone who either can dispel that magical effect if it's something like a web, or someone who can just trudge right through it and keep walloping the enemy, especially if it's a spellcaster that's maybe casting those spells. Um, so, yeah. Astrid doesn't have any magic items. What do you say we maybe give it to her? That way, uh, she can't be slowed down or bound up, so if somebody tries to pin the party in place, they're going to have a nasty surprise coming when Astrid just keeps bearing down on them. What do you think? Because, of course, Sam could dispel magic, but he can do that even if, unless he's completely paralyzed. Like, if he's in a web or a grease spell or something, he can still do that. The total paralysis is the only time that... Um, uh, he won't be able to cast a spell magic, so I think Astrid. 
There we go. Those little icons. I love watching those stack up. Yeah, see? You agree with me. She needs to be able to tank, right? Let's try that again. Let's see what else he's got. Ah, oh, pickpocket succeeded. Target had nothing to steal. So, that's the limits of pickpocket, is you can take actual equipment that the character is wearing, but not necessarily things that they have, um, like in their shop inventory if they're a shopkeeper. So, we're never going to be able to steal all those spell scrolls from him. Uh, now, I don't remember, if we were to, for example, kill him and then loot his body, all of that stuff might be in his inventory. Um, I'm not certain. But, we cannot pick it from his pocket. So let's go ahead and let's pick up maybe a level 3 spell if he's got it. It doesn't look like he wants to sell us any level 3 spells, honestly. Because I'm seeing things like, yeah, that's level 2. Cat's Grace is level 2. There's the web spell I was talking about. Mirror Image. Again, as our Scorcher. That's so tempting. Hmm. So yeah, he doesn't actually have any third level spells that he's willing to sell us. Gross. Let's have uh, Keshara talk to him. Because it might be that because he, he says every time, see, I'm only willing to offer you certain spells. I fear much of the knowledge I possess is beyond your comprehension, maybe in the future. Well, since Sana was the one talking to him, she only has second level spell slots. She hasn't gained third level yet. Huh. Nope. Okay, he's just not going to sell us any third level spells. Great. Well, we'll just have to find some someplace. We know, we know, we know. All right. Well, I guess that means it's time to go back with our uh, <clears throat> ill-gotten gains. Look, we've already looted a bunch of tombs, right? It's for great justice. It's for the greater good. That's what Sana's going to say anyway. I don't think that, uh, I don't think Hathaland or Keshara, like, really know where she got the ring and the necklace, and the rest of them don't care, because you know that Sam, Astrid, and of course Motmik is a thief, so, uh, but Sam and Astrid, they, they would think it was hilarious if they thought about it at all. That's my take. They have no problems whatsoever with the idea that she might have, um stolen that stuff right off of somebody's actual body. But it really is for the greater good, right? And these people are charging way too much for these magic items. And we're the ones out here doing all the work. Come on. We even took Oryk to task for that. It's like, why are you not helping the people of Kuldahar? Eh, I don't care. I'm not really invested. I've lived in other places. I'm going to move someplace else after this. I won't be in Kuldahar forever. Whatevs. Well, that's the price you pay. Exactly one rare and expensive amulet and one rare and expensive ring. Hey, there we go. Those magic weapons make a big difference, right? Sudden burst of intense battle music. Same again. See? Astrid's magic sword just went right through that guy. Where shadows are incorporeal, meaning, you know, insubstantial, intangible, not solid. Um, that's, uh, that's a lot harder to hit with a non-magical sword. Right, we'll get over here, and then I'm going to have Keshara recast her armor spell. It lasts for eight hours, but I can never really tell like exactly how long game time is in real time. Especially with all of the pausing in order to issue orders during combat, so...
We want to get the most duration out of it, so I'll wait until right before we go through the door and cast it then. At least we know the rest of this is clear. All right, girl, get your armor on. Okay. Here we go, folks. Y'all, it is time for the second floor. Well, it's very dark in here. Oh, there's a door. Let's have Motmuk start looking for traps. Maybe he can do a little thief work. Oh! Well, he did not notice that. Well, time to knife fight. I'll take care. They're not going anywhere. Take them out, guys. It's a lot of big old boys. Oh my goodness. Sam's getting shot a lot. Oops. Oh my. So many. Oh. That is another spellcaster. Skeletal mage. Don't like that. Oh man, that's not good. Let's get out of the area of effect of that spell. There we go. You hear it wearing off of all of them. Man, this place is a slaughterhouse all of a sudden. Whoo wee. So short but intense battle. My goodness gracious. If we didn't have story mode on, that would have gone very differently. Because it has for me in the past, I assure you. Indeed. Yeah, I'm not going to complain about the, uh, the treasure, that's for sure. There's quite a bit of it, too. Nice. Okay, looks like that spell wore off. So we'll identify these hammer darts and be about our business. Agreed. Oh, there's more stuff. Let's see. There we go. Pick up the rest of this. Now let's double check what we've got here. Some plus one arrows, I bet. Yep. Please be a long bow. Oh, it's a short bow plus one again. Oh, well. It's okay. It's still money, right? No one's upset about that. Okay. I hate to run out here without uh, detecting traps, but. Hoo! 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 Let's get these guys down really quick. Whites, that's no good. Yeah, this place is full of bad. I think that it's time for Keshara to do a little bit of magic. Where's that burning hand spell? Wait. Oh no! I told her to memorize it, but then we didn't rest again before we left town. Oh well. On the other hand, maybe she can make use of these bracers. Here, Sana, quick. She's just throwing them across to her in battle. Hey! There's those bracers of defense, AC8, right? Now we don't have to buy those. Excellent. 
Now, that is about the same, I think, as her armor spell. Scale mail AC6. Okay. So, her armor spell is better than the bracers, uh, but that way when she doesn't have the armor spell on, her AC will still be better. So. Oh, boy. Well, I'm just going to turn them loose. Guys. There we go. I would turn undead, but they look like they're doing pretty good. And I think we're enough episodes in. I'm going to go in here and... There we go. I'm going to turn that off. Just because it's causing a lot of extra pausing. I'm not sure if that's super fun for y'all to watch, but I'm hitting that button a lot, so... There we go. Shoo wee Gracious. I'm here. Man, more loot though, right? Nobody's upset about that. Oh, this banner. It's born with age. Let's see. Oh, we've got tunnels and tunnels and doorways. Okay, well, now let's check with traps here. Check four traps. Enemy sighted. Well, we know what to do about that. My goodness, they just keep coming. Woo. This one's mine. Get him, Hathelin. Whew, he did too. Chunks. So, chunks, huh? Sorry, I feel like I'm really late to that meme. There we go. Phew-wee. That's a lot. Man. Any more magic items that we can identify? I feel like... There we go. It's more arrows plus one. She's built up a nice stack of those. We get into a good boss fight. Okay. Go back to detecting traps here. So, there's a lever right here. That's open. And it looks like... Yep, I think we've, we've got a door on either side here. And then it looks like we've got another corridor. Right there, yep. These have doors we have to open. These don't. We've already pulled some enemies out of this way, so maybe we'll start there. Let's see. Oh, boy. Scroll, a scroll, a wand, a potion, a dagger. Oh, he's out. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good to me. We'll have to make room. We don't want him to be too full up. Again is our Scorcher. Hey, I wanted that. Now we have it for free. Cure moderate wounds. That is cure light wounds. Well, we'll do this. There we go. Potion of insight. Does someone have one of those? Do y'all remember? Is it her? No. I felt like somebody did. This is the one that gives you a bonus to wisdom. Hmm. Well, I'm not entirely certain that we need that one. We'll keep it in reserve just in case. I don't think we need it in a quick slot. This is going to be some more mummies tea. We'll finish that stack off there. 
Mage Dagger plus one. Hey. So, like most typical daggers, blah, 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 can cast one extra first-level wizard spell, and it's a plus-one weapon as well. So. Well, she's not really proficient with them, but... I think... Yeah, it only gives you the first-level spell slot if you have it equipped. Hmm. She's not proficient with daggers, though. We'll hang on to it for now. And then we'll see what comes of that. And let's see, she doesn't have Knock Memorized. So let's go ahead, we'll trade that out for that. Now this is useful, Wand of Magic Missiles. Nice. Inflicts 1d4 plus 1 magic damage against one creature. Hmm. It's only a single missile, but hey. It has 22 charges. Let's take this potion of fire resistance. We'll put it in the bag as well. She can hang on to that. So that's 22 missiles. That gives her a ranged attack for now at least. That's pretty good, right? I'm happy with that. Okay. Man, we found a lot of loot. I'm really happy. Alright, Montmick. You know the drill. Hmm. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Well, looks like uh, these side rooms might just be monster closets. The lever opens this door, of course. Time to turn this one. Here I come. Death comes the for hells you. Come with me. Get him, guys. I'm on it. One more over here. That should take care of this room. These gears seem to be in almost new condition. There are no signs of rust or age that you can see. However, they do not seem to work. Perhaps there is a switch to activate them. And indeed there is. Any more monsters in here in this closet? Ah! Oh, I got cocky. Of course, again. What? Multiple traps? Ah. Uh, now see, if I was just playing by myself, I, I would probably, out of spite, load that and go back and disarm them. But, it's alright. I'm a grown-up. Okay, let's see what we have here. Silence, 15-foot radius. That's a cleric spell. Never could figure that out, like why silence wasn't available to mages, but... Let's see, another morning star, it looks like. Potion of Regeneration regenerates two hit points per round for three turns. Eh, that's not great, just six hit points total, but could stop a bleeding effect, so we'll keep it around. Morning star plus one, of course. He's already got one of those. So that leaves this, which is another wand, I think. Ooh, can't identify this one. Might be something pretty good. So we'll deal with that later. All right. Well, we know we've got to explore these other rooms before we pull the switch, right? We have to. Okay, y'all. No, no, no. Come back out here. You come to us. That other room was full of traps. I don't want anything to do with that room until Montmux looked it over. Okay. Oh, 
Well, found another skeleton, I guess. I, d I don't know that that counts as a trap, but he did detect something. Send him in again. More skeletons. Man, the people who decorated this place just really had a theme. I think we've de confirmed at this point that they were Merkelites or whatever his faithful are called. Oh, he's grumpy. He's grumpy, y'all. Okay. Little more scouting. Little more skeleton. Goodness gracious. Time to trim this one down to size. There we are. And that goes back to the entrance, so I think that might be just about all of this end. There's another door up here, of course, but... Aha! See, I knew there's something. Is it trapped, though? Ooh, there's multiple somethings. These uh, burial niches in the wall. A necklace. Does it look trapped, buddy? All right, I trust your judgment. Cash, cash, we love grave cash. A ring, cash. Well, we'll put this in his bag, his handy dandy carrying pouch. Okay. Come on. Here, zombie, zambi, zambi. Here, zambi, zambi, zambi. It's a shame we didn't wind up with a druid in the party. This could have been plants versus zombies. Keshara is so intense. There we go. Okay. Finding any traps, my fella? No. Okay. Hey, another key. A plain key. I'm sure they don't mean, like, to the planes outside. <laughs> this is a key. It is quite unremarkable. Well, I imagine it is. If it's a plane key. So now we have a gate key. A sanctum key. A priest's key. A mausoleum key. And a plane key. And I'm not sure how many of these we've used, because he, like Mitos, talked about um, us stealing the keys... But we don't know for sure, like, which ones we stole. I'm guessing this one, and I, I can't remember. For as many times as i played this, I can't remember for sure. I think this is the one that actually led us into Kresselak's tomb, like, into that first, through that, that door where Mitos was at. This will be very handy indeed to have around in case we need it. There we go. Nothing. I guess that's it. Okay, so one more section then. I'm on it. 
Here we go, we're on our way. And then we will pull the level. Pull the lever. The lever. <laughs> I read where it said the third level, and my brain just put that word in my mouth. Pull the level, Crunk! Can't wait to see what's back here. Oh, it's skeletons. No way. Would never have guessed. Would never have guessed in a million years. How original. Oh, that one's putting up a fight. <laughs> one of my favorite things about Dungeons and Dragons uh, is sometimes the way that uh, some random NPC will surprise you, and you know they're like guard number twelve or something, and then somewhere along the way they just like really give a good accounting for themselves, and. Uh, even though they might be trying to um, like stop the characters or get in their way, you kind of build up a little affection for them. And it becomes like, man, good job, guard number 12. Or in this case, like, you know, skeleton number 72. Usually when I'm running a game, I'll give uh, characters like that a name and have them come back later. Like, you know, maybe they'll come back as a lieutenant with a scar and an eye patch. Something like that. Be a, a mid-boss fight later on. Some bracers that look non-magical. Let's see. Cash. Cash. Cash again. Not much cash, but that's fine. Ooh, is that a magic katana? What? Oh, her inventory's full. What's your inventory doing full? That's ridiculous. A plus one katana. Well, no one is proficient with that. <laughs> so, that's, that's just a fun item. Ooh, a skull. Let's take it. We probably will never need that, right? Oh, another plus one sling, methinks. And let's see. Give that to her to identify. We'll pick this up. Give that to Sam. Why not? That is a plus one sling. All right. Well, we have plenty of those now, so... Be it. What's behind door number 22, I guess. Oh my goodness, y'all. Why are you like this, my children? Wow, they really are kind of stuck on their good, aren't they? Man. You know what? I don't even care at this point. I'm just going to be like, well done, traps. Every time I detect traps, there aren't any, and any, every time that I stop, there are three. <laughs> That's all right. Who still has slots? There we go. Gosh, that's embarrassing and frustrating. This is just three traps right there. Oh, well. This dead body. 
Here we go. Has some interesting stuff. Hold person. Here. I'll trade you this skull for that scroll. That is important because that is a very good spell. But also, it's a third level spell. Excellent. No, oh, it's second level. Oh, that's right. This is second edition, so it's a cleric spell, I think. Yeah, see, hold person's not even a wizard spell in second edition. Oh, gross. I forgot. Uh, I have to juggle, juggle, juggle. Well. There we go. Maybe he can use it in an upcoming battle. And this... Oh my goodness, everyone's inventories are so full of junk. Here we go. This. Painted stone. Black wolf talisman. Appears to be nothing more than a flat piece of stone with a wolf's paw painted on it, but despite that simple appearance, it contains powerful beneficial magic. Plus one to AC, plus one to save versus breath weapons, 10% cold resistance, and plus 10 maximum hit points, folks. That's pretty good. And it goes in their next slot. So, normally, because of the plus 10 hit points, I would want to give that to Keshara because she has half of what everyone else in the party has, or a third when it comes to our fighters up here. But she's already wearing the Amulet of Metaspell Influence that we stole from Auric, and only she can wear it. And that bonus spell slot is really good. Not to mention, her robe that we just found gives her 20% cold resistance, which is better than the 10% of the talisman. So, hmm... Plus one to AC and breath saves, plus 10 max hit points, 10% cold resistance. Hmm. Sam's been getting hit a lot, and he is spending a lot of time in melee, and he only has two-thirds of Astrid and Hathalyn's hit points, of course, plus he's our healer. We don't want him to go down, and he keeps getting beaten up pretty badly. What do you say we give this to him? That'll boost his HP to 50, give him some cold resistance, improve his AC, and also he doesn't have a magic item other than this. Bam. There we go. Well. Okay. Hue. It's a lot of treasure and stuff, folks. There we go. Pull the lever. Whoop. Come on, you can do it, Motmic. <laughs> okay. Well. Time to see what lies beyond this other door. Ah. I see. Hmm. I feel like that pop team epic meme. It's like, ah, you, you are. Oh, hmm. Intruders, we are under attack. To arms, brethren, to arms. Ho. Oh. Oh my goodness. Well. It should. Gosh, oh. That is a lot of bad guys. Astrid's not worried about it. Ooh. Ooh, they're beating Motmik up pretty badly. There we go. Let's have her use her bard song. She hasn't been doing that. Shoo wee. That helped a bit. My goodness gracious. 
Man, look at that. They got walloped. Folks. Yeah, and that is just too much treasure for us to pick up. It's just too much. So. Wow. That was a heck of a fight. Let's replenish their ammunition really quickly. Don't want them to run out, that's for sure. And he's used up almost a whole stack. Gosh. <sighs> yes, that axe is green. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. That greenish tint indicates a masterwork item, so that is a high-quality battle axe. Which means that we will want to think about, you know, like... Well... You know, like we want to drop some stuff in order to take um, high-quality items with us when we can find them. Like that one. Just, just because they're worth more money. I think at this point, except for Keshara, um, everyone has at least a high-quality weapon, if not a magic weapon of some kind, maybe not in both slots. Well, yeah, because like, he's got a plus one dagger. His crossbow, which he uses more than anything else, is not magical yet. Uh, no, no, both of her weapons are still normal, so yeah, Sana is still kind of falling behind. Phew, goodness gracious. Well, should we make another quick trip back to town and empty our inventories again, folks? Because we do have this wand we need to identify. Yeah, a lot of them are, and so that's why, like, some of them, you know, I'll probably drop and, and take more profitable ones, but there are some, like, short swords tend to be worth about six. Um, long swords or bastard swords tend to be about, like, you know, five or six gold, but a lot of them are only worth one GP. So, I don't feel too bad about leaving some of these. Um, like, the helmet, for example, is not really worth treasure, but the completionist in me wants to take everything. First things first. Well, let's... This is really the first thing. Oh, come on. We don't even have time for that. Fine. Get them. No, you let them come to us. We know better than that. Oop. Oop. And I... Oop. <gasps> Has it finally happened? Guys. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, Sonic, can you tell us? Oh. <gasps> Yes. All right. Yeah, you would think that because all of those weapons cost so much to buy, and then it's so disappointing when you cart them back to town and get one GP each from them. Oh, yeah. And even in quantity, like, it's not worth that much, which is why it's okay if we have to leave a bunch. So it's it winds up being junk anyway. But this is not junk. Check that out. And juggle things around here. There we go. See, he's got a masterwork battle axe now. Ta-da! He's got a magic weapon in both hands, folks. That's what we were just talking about. Okay, we're going to let these guys come to us over here. Try that out. Ooh! Oh, Sam leveled up. Nice. Speaking of which... There we go. That's another plus one longsword, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir, it is. And at this point, both of our longsword users actually have a plus one longsword, so that's free cash is what that becomes. Let's level up our cleric here. He gains third level spells and some hit points. And, of course, unlike Keshara, he's going to have access to those right away. So, Oh, oh that's right. I forgot. Actually, he already had those. Yeah, insert appropriate meme here, you know. How about a holy smite? That sounds good to me. Okay, I think we can leave the rest of that.
It's kind of like, you know, you get to a point in games like Diablo or Titan Quest or Grim Dawn where there's an enormous amount of treasure dropping. And uh, at a certain point, you have to just kind of change your filters to where you stop paying attention to anything that's not at least magical. And then later on in the game, um, you stop paying attention to anything that's not at least rare. Oh, there's a mummy. Get him. Get him. Oh, they're using magic on us now. Oh, and they're attacking us every which way. Uh, we just sprung a trap, but there was no time to check it. That was rough. All I want to do is check for traps. Yeah, clerics can still be epic tanks. But, uh, but clerics have always been like that class. So, very much so. Phew, we. Goodness gracious. All I want to do is check for traps. Till the sun comes up. Okay. Cure moderate wounds. Yeah, we're going to have to start dropping some other stuff off. Uh, see, those bracers are trash. They're not even magic. Um. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, they're proficient with... Uh, with shields for sure. In fact, Sam has one here. Well, we haven't found a good magic shield like that's better than this one, but he does have a plus one shield. He has gotten good use out of that. More mummies tea. Oh, come on. He's got a stack of those. Oh, so much juggling. We need a bag of holding. That's what we really need. Potion of Strength. Who even has that? He does. I'm starting to lose track. That's how you know you've got too much stuff. There we go, and this can stack there. Excellent. Shoo! Okay. And if you meant outside of this game, then, you know, like in current edition D&D, 5e or something, then yes, even there as well, clerics are um, proficient with shields. Let's see, cash, that doesn't take up a slot. Yeah, if you can afford one, for sure. Let's see, silence 15-foot radius again. Another one, what's this? Ghoul touch, hey... Come on now. All right, trade him. Re oh, okay, you know what? Um, this is just a... Oh, that's high quality. Here. There, we'll make a slot. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that the mobile version works really well. Um, it works great with a touch screen. And also, um, it just came out on the Switch as well. If you guys are not aware, Planescape Torment and Icewind Dale have been released in a duo package for the Nintendo Switch. And Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 have been released. So, like, when you buy each of those, you're buying a set of two games. And they are the enhanced editions. So, like, that's the Icewind Dale that I'm playing right now which is great, because that means it's going to look good on your big HD flat screen if you've got it docked, and if you have, like, the Switch Lite or something and you go mobile, um, then it's going to work great on that touch screen as well. Let's see, Ghoul Touch. Yeah, this is a save versus paralysis. Yeah, Switch is getting some really good uh, games. Yeah, the classic Doom just came out. Um, and, of course, there is the uh, Sega Classics Collection, which is like 50 games like um, the old Shining Force games, Golden Axe, some Sonic games. Highly recommend that. That is a collection that's been passed around on like um, Xbox 360. It's on PS4. Um, yeah, yeah. No, do, do recommend. And then, of course, the Switch also has, um, I think this is their subscription service. 
uh, but they have that um, Nintendo service that you can pay for that's like $3 a month where um, you uh, you get access to some old NES and SNES games, and they have some good stuff on there, like Kirby, uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, uh, Breath of Fire 1, Demon's Crest, F-Zero, some great stuff, y'all. Highly recommend. Shocking Grasp. Okay, Shara is making out like a bandit. I just wish we could find a third level spell. Dang it. Okay, Healing Potion. There, we'll just give that to him. He's been working really hard, and he took a lot of damage in that last battle, so I feel bad for him. Potion of Strength goes to Hatherland. There we are. So yeah, Nintendo Switch uh, is, is really getting some good classic games. Definitely do recommend looking into that. It's true. Um, I am not a fan of racing games. I'm very picky about those, and I've never been into a lot of racing games. Um, usually weird one-offs. Like, of course, everybody plays Mario Kart at some point. Um, but when I was a kid and didn't have access to a lot of racing games, um, I loved F-Zero. That and, for some reason, Need for Speed. I don't know why. I just always really like Need for Speed games. Maybe it's because there's so much customization on the cars. Spectral Guard. Ah, it's a shadow skeleton. It's like fusion cuisine, merging two types of undead. There we go. Okay, we're gonna have to throw away some crap items. Uh... Is that a regular longsword? Yep. So we can pick up some of these green items. What do you want? See, I keep almost throwing away the regular kind. Regular bastard sword. Oh, those are worth money, though. Here, this short bow. She can pick that up. There we go. When you're doing this level of inventory management, like, you have reached a point where there's just there's too much treasure. Not that the game is giving me too much, because this happens in every D&D &D game, but more like, you know, y you need a place to put it. There's too much treasure because you're out of room. So I think it's definitely time to consider a bag of holding. All right, let's see if they'll let Montmick check for some traps. Lord, what was that noise? Hoo-hoo! They won't catch us this time, will they, friends? Oh, quick, before that zombie gets up here. There we go. Ooh, oh my gosh, he ate every one of those. That's okay. Yep, he's gonna get revenge. Angry dwarf revenge. Ah, that's that sound. Those good, good horror movie filters over those sound effects. Chosen zombie. Imbued white. Spectral guards. Whew, that was two levels up. My goodness, and another enemy sighted, but we'll let it come to us. There we go. Gosh almighty. Folks, they're starting to throw some serious monsters at us. Are you feeling it? Yes, indeed. I always look forward to that. Montmick's Thief just leveled up a little while ago, so this will probably be his fighter side. It looks like, ooh, Astrid leveled up as well. Yep, he leveled up in fighter. Okay, Thaco reduced by one, improved saves, five hit points. Good. Good lad. Astrid, my lady, my girl. Oh, she gets a proficiency slot, y'all. Look at that. Thirteen beefy, beefy hit points. And an improvement to hit. So let's see, she's got three ranks in Longsword. She can't put any more in that. There's no reason not to put it in Longsword. So... That makes her a high master. She gets plus three to hit. She already had plus four to damage, so that's an improvement there. Minus one speed factor. 
and an extra one half attack per round with the selected weapon. Nice. She is very strong. This number of attacks. Look at that. Shoo. All right. Folks, this is good stuff. Okay. Let's hope these aren't trapped. More healing potions. Uh, let's see, what else have you got that you can... Here. We'll take a treasure, leave a treasure. This bastard sword, you probably use that more than us. That short sword. There we go. And then in return, we'll take these scrolls. Okay, that is magic missile. We know Keshara needs that. All right, because we were unlucky enough not to be able to start with that. Color spray she has, so Sana can have this one. That's another good first level spell for her. And this Cure Light Wounds, that will go in Sam's scroll case as a backup healing item. Excellent. Hmm, this is sealed in some unknown manner and the lid will not budge. Okay, this one will. That's a composite longbow and a chant scroll. Okay, so the chant goes in the scroll case. The composite longbow I am going to take just because, uh, you know, it sells for quite a bit. Oh, right. Okay, gems, gems, gems. Excellent. Cause those can go right there. Oh, two healing potions. Forgot about those. Uh... You know what? Let's give those to Sana. More gems. Okay. Shield. And her spell book is really starting to fill out. Potion of Stone Form. Now that's an interesting one. Set your armor class to zero, plus three to your saving throws. Your dexterity is reduced by three for an hour. So, that's a good emergency defensive potion. Agreed. Look at all those blue torches. Like, vary your colors just a little bit. Okay, folks. Let's see what's behind this door. Oh! Unsurprisingly, more undead. What's that guy, though? That's not a tattered skeleton, that's a spectral knight. Ooh, Hetheland's got his number, though. No, 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 no. Let them come to us. Block the doorway. Block the doorway. There we go. Come on. Y'all are fine. It's okay, Sauna. They're not going anywhere. We got this. See, they're nothing. They're nothing. Oh. Another skeletal mage. Ooh, oh god. I'm gonna have to rush him. Oh, Keshara. Get out of there. Get out of there. What can she do? Let's see. She can blur so they can stop hitting her. And then we will divide and conquer. There. Now she'll be harder to hit. Tackle that guy. I'm not sure what spell that is because they changed a few of the graphics, but I know that anything an enemy puts on the ground that glows is probably bad for you. Phew! Gracious me, oh my. Okay, we've got to pick up those magic arrows, of course. Any other high quality weapons? Just a bastard sword. You know nothing, Jon Snow. 
Morning Star. I think the rest of this is just regular. Oh, is that? Yeah, that's high quality. You've got to take that. I think that's it, though. Okay. That could have been a lot worse. Okay. Let's go over this now. Uh, arrows. There we go. That'll free up a slot. Hammer arrows. Hmm. That does not stack with the high quality arrow. I think it'll stack with those, though. Yeah, see, they're already stacking. The game knows. Okay, more hammer arrows. Good. These should be fire arrows. Excellent. She's getting some options now. And we have enough that we can actually afford to, like, spend some of them, which is good. Two-hand sword, dagger. It's a composite longbow. Take that for the cash. Let's get those bracers. Bolts plus one. Does he have a stack of those yet? No, he does not. We should start one. Now the bracers. And I think that that's all that we need to worry about. Oh, there's another composite longbow. Um, there you go. She can take it. Bracers. I wonder what they'll be. Let's have Sana find out for us. Bracers of Defense AC8. Okay, so we can sell those since she's already wearing a pair. Um, yeah, they're not as good as her leather armor. Well, that's fine. That just means that it's treasure, right? It's just cash. Okay, I think that that's all the unidentified items, except for that wand. That's all of the good stuff off the floor. Oh, where have we seen that? Duplicate of the one you saw at the wolf, or at the tomb entrance. Hmm. Ooh. More dudes. But they're blue. Cresselac. Hmm. He's just walking around hanging out. Well, if he's not going to talk to us first, then we can look around here and listen to him laughing. <laughs> well, there. Oops, there we go. Okay, well, y'all will enjoy this, I think. Let's have Sana talk to him. At last, the mighty adventurer stands before me. To what do I owe this honor? And if y'all don't recognize that voice, that is the late the great, the unrepeatable Tony J, who has done so many voices. You may recognize him from Legacy of Cain. Uh, he was in Dungeon Keeper as the narrator. Um, he's been in The Bard's Tale. He's been in so many things. Um, of course, I'm telling my age here, but if you're familiar with the CGI animated series reboot, he was... Megabyte, which was one of his favorite parts. He did a lot of voice acting for video games, and uh, he did a lot for this game as Cresselac. So here we are. I take it you were expecting me, she says. We'll find out who he is in a minute. And of course, we've asked this question before and not really gotten much of an answer, so let's just kind of open with this. Shadow 
cursed to haunt these halls. That sounds unpleasant. Why, indeed? That is a tale long in the telling. Would you hear it? Well, we've killed everyone you know and stolen all of your stuff. And, uh... I, I guess we don't really have anything else to do. As a young man, I was a conqueror. I ravaged the lands and brought all who opposed me under my rule. I built a kingdom upon the corpses of my enemies, and I reveled in the glories of war. However, in time, my sword grew heavy, my aim less true, and I realized I was growing old. For the first time in my life, I knew fear. Realizing that death would someday claim me, I returned to my homeland. For months, I pondered what course I should pursue in my remaining years. And you settled on becoming a cultist of Merkel? I thought of my kingdom and all that I'd fought to create, but it was meaningless to me. A kingdom lasts a lifetime, but death lasts an eternity. That's fair. I decided to forsake all that I had wrought in life for a place in the afterlife. Oh. I ordered this tomb built in utmost secrecy and squandered the wealth of my kingdom doing so. Upon its completion, I traveled here with my most faithful followers to survey the work. Oh. Sorry about that. You, uh... You probably knew all those guys, didn't you? Oof. Hmm. Rip. Finding all in order, I slew the workers and buried them in the Vale of Surrey. My faithful followers I sacrificed to become the guardians of this tomb. Oh, okay. So, so he killed them first. He had already killed them once before we did, so... That's fine then. That that's that makes it okay. Finally, I sacrificed myself to my god, hoping to stand at his side in the land of the dead. Little did I know that my actions would instead bind me to these halls for eternity. Well, hmm. That seems to be quite the pickle you've put yourself in. What do you think? Should we take him to task for it? I'm sure that it's nothing he hasn't already thought about. Or should we just go straight on into the, uh... So, how does all of this affect Kaldahar? Because let me tell you, I don't mind listening to Tony J's voice for, like, like extra time. Hmm. All of that wealth to build this tomb, though. A kingdom's wealth. That explains why it's so fancy and there's so much magic here. For sure. And how it's endured all this time as well. That must be him up there, considering he's see-through down here rather than a physical undead. He looks like a ghost. So, that's his body, you see. And then the black wolf, that explains why that's his symbol. If it is evil that you seek, then you need look no further. I stand here before you. However, I am not the one who plagues Kaldahar. For that evil, you must look elsewhere. Well, at least he knows. So, yeah, now that we know what he's done, like, why should we believe him? I care not at all whether you believe me, adventurer. I am centuries dead and bound to these halls for eternity. I guess that kind of does make the situation seem a little smaller. I care even less for the living or their gathering places. If your Kaldahar is beset by evil, it is not of my doing. Go seek your villain elsewhere. Also fair. He seems like the guy who would, or the kind of guy who would take credit if it was his doing. So, if not you... Indeed. I can answer your question, but I require a boon first. Perform a task for me, and I will answer you. Ooh, so the first person that we've encountered who seems like he might actually know something. Of course, he could be lying, but it seems like he doesn't really have any reason to do so, so 
What do you want from us first? Oril, the ice goddess, is worshipped by some here in the cold north. Oril commands her followers to extinguish all fires, to open structures to the cold winds, and to deny warmth a place to gather. Yeah, Oral is also evil. As you can see, my tomb would be an abomination to a follower of Oral. That's fair. A priestess of Oral has stood at the threshold of my tomb and gazed within. Recently she attempted entry, but my guardians foiled her. Hmm. Now that you have slain my guardians, there is nothing to prevent her from returning and carrying out the will of Oriel. <laughs> he, he sounded a little irritated about that, didn't he? But it, it is a fair point. I do not wish to spend eternity in a cold, lightless hell. Find this Aurelite and slay her. Only then will I answer you. Hmm. Well, we have a choice here, but probably we're going to have to do what he says anyway, and here's why. Oral, as I said, is also an evil goddess, just like Merkel is evil. There's a lot of those. And um, Kuldahar is all about warmth and life, right? And we know that the snow has been drawing in closer, the circle of warmth radiating from the Great Oak has been receding. That could be Oral's doing since she is the god of ice and winter. So, if she has followers in the Vale or in Kaldahar that are attempting to harm Kaldahar, we probably are going to have to take them out anyway. We might as well get something from Kresselak for doing so, because we have no reason not to kill an evil priestess who's trying to bring eternal winter to the land, right? So, should we tell him off, or should we just agree with him? Just agree to his terms. Keeping in mind, you know, half the party's good, and then some of them are neutral. Hmm. I don't know how comfortable Sam will be with this, but also, he's a practical guy, right? Like I said, I don't think we have any reason not to make this deal with him. This isn't the proverbial deal with the devil, like, what can he do to us? And now we've taken out all of his tomb guardians, so, I mean, they can't really play Kuldahar, so... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Alright. I, I feel like everyone in the party would probably be down with that. Excellent. Be quick about the task, for even now I sense her presence within the veil. Return to me when you have dealt with her. Until then, I have nothing more to say. No, Tony J. Don't leave me. Okay, well, yeah, she would want to put out all of these blue torches. Oops, let's grab everybody. Okay, well, we've got to go find this Priestess of Oral, then, and do for her, and then Kresselak will give us what we've been looking for. Once again, for the greater good, sometimes you have to do some unsavory deeds, like, you know, tomb robbing, or... Killing folks what don't know that you're looking for them. Tomb robbing for great justice. Assassinations for great justice. Shoo wee. It's a long walk out of this tomb. You can really tell that he spent a lot of money on it, right? Oh my goodness. And to think we came in here and just messed everything up. After he's been left alone for centuries. Well, that's what you get for being a giant loser in life, I guess. Should have been less of a jerk when you were alive. Then you wouldn't have had to worry about the afterlife. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I don't know where this Priestess of Oral is. I mean, he said she's in the Vale, and this is labeled Vale Ice Cave, right? The Ice Cave. 
Not to mention, uh, we should all suspect that that's where she's at anyway, because remember, when we went in there before, there were only yetis, but those tents and supplies had been set up there. And the characters noted when we inspected them that uh, it looked like evidence of human habitation. So... We will just go straight there and have words with this Auralite priestess. Let's have Sam go up front. There she is. Oh! Well, look who that is. This is my private retreat. I will thank you to leave me to my solitude. Well, who are you? <laughs> Who I am is no concern of yours, but I suppose there is no harm in telling you. My name is Lizan. Or Lizan. What are you doing here? I am a simple clergywoman who is on retreat. I came here seeking solace and a place to meditate. And you couldn't find anywhere better than this cave. She's acting like we haven't met her before. No, not really. Many faiths teach that enlightenment can be achieved through adversity and hardship. This cave provides just such an environment. And hmm, what faith do you follow? That is a private matter that I choose not to discuss with strangers. I do not pry into your private affairs, so I will thank you not to pry into mine. Now, if you are done with your questions, I would appreciate being left to my devotions. Yeah, but we know you're a priestess of Oral. Hmm. I am somewhat familiar with Oral. The Frost Maiden is not very popular among most peoples. Many worship her out of fear rather than love or devotion. Her truly faithful are rare and secretive, to say the least. Why do you seek such a person? And here we go. Finally, we get to say something. Let us end this game, Lizanne. I recognize you as the barmaid from Kuldahar. What is a barmaid doing here unless she is more than she seems? I see. I wondered if you would recognize me, since our meeting was so brief. Very well, let us drop the charade. I am Lazan, servant of Oral. You have found your priestess. Now state your business with me. Well, so first let's get her to confess to being evil, right? What are the tenets of your faith? Oral is the Frost Maiden the cold breath of the north. She asks that her followers extinguish all flames, open structures to the cold, and to embrace winter. Those are the basic precepts of the faith. I will reveal nothing more to a non-believer. So tell me, why do you ask? Well, let's say this one, maybe. Sam's kind of engaging in theological debate. He's not been great at that so far, but we'll give her a chance. We want to be sure someone else wasn't trying to deceive us. Oh? Who dares to speak of Oral? I would know who this person is. Hmm. Well, now. So she's confirmed what Kresselak said about the tenets of her faith at the very least. What do you think? Should we just uh, come right out and tell her that it's Kresselak? Or should we just attack her? Because she's agreeing with him up to a point, but she hasn't admitted to, like, hurting Kaldahar or anything like that so far, right? She could just kind of be secretive about her religion because a lot of people are going to disagree with it. They're going to persecute her for it. And, I mean, that's fair, right? If you follow an evil god, that's, that's fair. But at the same time, from her perspective, she just wants to be left alone, maybe. So, uh, should we give her a chance to explain herself, or should we just attack her, since she seems to be mostly uh, confirming what he said? We could potentially get the jump on her, right? But she doesn't know who we're talking about yet. Hmm. Hmm. 
Well, this is Sam, right? Yeah, let's give her a chance. Let's let her reveal herself to be a villain if she is one. Hmm. I know nothing of any spirit, but I am familiar with the tomb you speak of. It is an abomination in the eyes of the goddess. I intend to make it more pleasing to her tastes. Hmm, and what of Kaldahar? See, instead of we can... Uh, we'll come back to the tomb. Let's see about how she feels about Kaldahar. Kaldahar. The great tree and the circle of warmth are an abomination in the eyes of Auril. Kaldahar shall embrace the winter in her name or perish in the cold wastes. The will of Auril shall be done. Okay. Now I think we can confirm that she is a threat. Well, we cannot allow that to happen. Oh, really? How sad. I shall have to kill you, then. Prepare to meet your fate, fool. Well, we gave you a chance. Let's do this. And you know what? This is a battle between clerics, right? Let's try one of our new spells here. We have resist fire and cold. Ooh, ooh. Uh-oh. She summoned a bunch of yetis. Well, let's split up a little bit here. We're going to help Sam over here with Kishara. Let's have him use a spiritual hammer. What do you say? There we go. Take the fight to her. Alright. Well, guys. Let's get her. Let's try one of these magic missiles, right? Sonic and switch back to that. Oh, there we go. That's it. Shoo wee. She is dead, and the curse has been lifted. We are free. We thank you. What curse? She cursed the veil and bid us to rise. We could not deny her. The calling. It was too strong. Now, we've heard about a calling before. Was that Aurel? I do not know. I cannot explain. We could not resist the calling. I must leave now. The land of the dead calls me home. Farewell. Why is he making those big, heavy footsteps? Okay, well, whatever. Whew. Okay, well. Let's throw down some of this uh, cheap stuff. We need to make sure that we can pick everything up that we need to take with us. Right? He's got a slot. sword. There we go. Okay. Oh, our inventory's full. Dread it. 
Oh, <laughs> his spell wore off. No problem. All right, now do we have anything else? Here we go. A couple more of those morning stars that we can throw down. And this is probably just going to be... There. Another plus one morning star, but... Yeah, okay. Goodness gracious. Okay, we've already raided everything else. Shoo wee. Well, so we've uncursed the veil. That means no more random shadow encounters, folks. We've done some good work. So, Lysan is the one who cursed the veil so that the undead would rise, but they were already hearing some kind of calling, which is why her curse was so strong and why it worked so well. Hmm. So, could be Oral that's behind this. Or it could be that her priestess was just taking advantage of some other evil that was already there. We shall have to see. But first, let's go give our friend Tony J the good news. Y'all, there we go. We'll go let him know that the Auralite has been dealt with. We'll see what he has to say about it. Because, of course, he seemed to imply that uh, there was someone else involved. Right? He wanted us to kill Lazan in order to get that information to tell us who's really behind all of this attacking Kaldahar. So let's find out. Let's see who he thinks it is. Done. The dulcet tones of Tony J will reveal the answer to the mystery. We're coming up on the end of this episode, so I want to thank you for joining me tonight being part of our adventuring party. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, go check out my YouTube channel as well. You can like this video up there once I upload it, probably tomorrow. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Pillowfort as well, so that way you don't miss future uploads or other streams that I might do or any other announcements that I have. Yeah. Alright, let's have Sam talk to him this time. Yes, we carried out your assassination. Yes, I no longer sense her presence. You have done well, and I thank you. As a reward, you may take what you find in my sarcophagus. And we got 26,000 experience points for that. Nice. Uh, but you said you'd tell us uh, who was responsible for e the evil in Kaldahar. So you just straight up lied to us. Promised. I made you no promise, adventurer. As for your answer, knowing where your enemy is not is as vital as knowing where he is. Think upon that. As much as I hate to admit it, that's true. That doesn't make him less of a of a jerk or a liar. But he's right. Ah, oh, gross. Okay, well, Hathelin leveled up. Nice! He gets a proficiency slot as well. 
We don't really have anywhere to put it, though. He's maxed out two-weapon style as well as both longsword and axe. I guess that means it's time to maybe start thinking about um, giving him a ranged weapon? We could put another melee weapon proficiency in here somewhere, and that way he could use things like the katana we picked up, or the warhammer or something, in case we needed different damage types. Um, but I think I'd like to pick up a ranged weapon of some kind first, just because you never know when you're going to need one. Hmm. What if we give him short bows? Because we already have someone using crossbows, and uh, Sana is using long bows. We don't have anyone using short bows, and we have a couple of plus one short bows, don't we? How about that? And of course, he actually now as a ranger is going to get priest spells too. Ta-da! So he'll get some druid magic. So what do you guys think? Does short bow sound good? That way we can make some use of uh, a little bit of the treasure that we've got. Hmm. The other options would be dart and sling, neither of which really appeal to me. Not when you can potentially have a bow instead, like, you know, that this is for people who can't use bows. Yeah, and this is not really appealing. I, I kind of like him with the sword and the axe. We have a theme going on because that's in his picture. So, you know, we can deviate from that. We don't have to be bound by it. But I think that I want to him to be at least competent with some kind of ranged weapon before we consider any additional melee weapons since he's already using two. So, if nobody has any objections, we'll get him using these short bows. And then we'll go from there. That also makes sense for him as like a, a rancher and a hunter, a farmer, you know, that kind of thing. Now let's find one of those magic short bows and just go ahead and give to him. He'll have to share some arrows with Sauna. Bow. There we go. There we are. Now, he won't use that right away, of course, but he's got it if we need it. Well, let's, uh... Hmm. Let's drop that dagger. What else can we get rid of? Are there any more daggers? There's another Morning Star. There's another morning star. A regular long sword, a regular long sword, regular long sword. There we go. So Keshara can go up here, take the treasure from the treasure chest. Oh. We weren't clicked on her. There we go. Give her an extra healing potion. Phasing Bastard Sword plus one. Similar to that dagger. 15% chance targets phased. So, that's awesome. Hmm. No one can use it, though. Two-handed sword. Ah, this one needs identify. That'll be some free cash. Hmm. And then we have this helmet and this plate mail which are black, especially for, uh, let's see, there we go, plate mail, that's a free armor upgrade, ta-da, there we are. So now she's wearing Cresselax armor. Probably the best thing we got out of all of this. Well, folks, Cresselax has told us all that he can tell us, or all that he's going to. So I guess that means that now it's time to head back to Kaldahar and see where our quest takes us next. And that's going to happen next weekend. As always, Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is New York and Miami time here in the U.S. 
And yeah, <laughs> thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here, being part of the party. We did a lot today, and I can't wait to see where it takes us next. So, as always, until next time, guys, thanks for playing. <laughs>